Somewhere Over the Rainbow by Linda Henderson. For any child who misses a pet who is no longer with them, up, up, up she went, higher than the clouds. Abby looked behind her. The earth and all she had known in her 12 short years on the planet was quickly fading away. But where was she going? All Abby could remember was the gentle touch of her best friend and caretaker, Emily. To her amazement and the delight of her curiosity, a shimmering bridge appeared before her, glowing with the most magnificent colors she had ever seen. Well, on Earth, only some of these colors had been distinguishable to her. But now she could see all the seven colors in the rainbow. Do you know what these colors are? They would include red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which is a mixture of blue and purple, and violet. Abby found herself trotting upon the rainbow bridge until she came to a group of animals like herself who had just crossed over to the other side. Where are we? asked Abby to her newfound furry friends. This is a place called heaven, answered an old but wise golden retriever. Because your friend Emily loved you very much, you've been chosen to come here and live in this peaceful place. This is true for each of us. We all had caring people who became our best friends on earth. That's why God let us come here when our bodies became too old and tired to go on. So of the animals also died because they were accidentally run over by a car or a truck. After they come here, they have many new friends to play with, but they always await the arrival of the person who was their best friend when they were on earth. But who will take care of us here? questioned Abby. Emily did such a good job of feeding me and keeping me safe and warm, I can't imagine living anywhere without her. Gus the Golden Retriever solemnly answered, The master of this place will make sure you have everything you need. And as you will soon discover, there is more love here than you can imagine. Who is this master you speak of? asked Abby. His name is Jesus, answered a rabbit in a high-pitched, squeaky voice. He's the kindest, most loving, wise, and gentle person you could ever know. He will make sure you're supplied with exactly what you need at all times. This place is the home of Jesus and his Father. He wants to share it with you. As perfect and fun as heaven is, there are times we still miss our families on earth, but God lets us see what's going on with them through special mirrors that appear whenever we think about them, Gus added. It's comforting to find out what they're doing and that they miss us as well. For the first time since Gus had arrived in heaven, he saw a a reflection of himself in a sparkling golden river running throughout the landscape. To his surprise, his coat was no longer old and tattered, but it looked fluffy and clean. In fact, he looked like a puppy again. And the best part was he felt brand new on the inside too. Gus knew he would never feel lonely again, and he wouldn't have to fight with any mean dogs in his neighborhood either. Sometimes those dogs would even try and bite his best friend, Emily. 
but he would always try and protect her so she wouldn't get hurt. In heaven, there are no mean animals, even those that didn't like each other very much on earth, such as lions and lambs, become friends when they get to heaven. If only our friends on earth could know how happy we all are here. Suddenly, another pure white dog came flying over the rainbow bridge and into the midst of their peaceful activities. Every time a new animal crosses this bridge between earth and heaven, an automatic welcoming crew is formed. When Gus recognized the new arrival as Toby, a dog who had belonged to a rich family in his neighborhood, he at first tried to hide behind a camel who was resting on the velvety grass. He re remembered how he used to tease and make fun of Toby. He never wanted Toby to join in the games they played back in his old neighborhood. One time when he saw Toby had stepped on a thorn and his paw was bleeding, instead of helping him, Gus just let out a hearty laugh. He even got his other friends to laugh at Toby, too. The truth was, Gus was jealous of Toby, and that's why he made fun of him. Because Toby was from a rich family, he always could eat the fanciest types of food, such as steak or lobster. Toby got so much attention from his caretakers, a little too much attention, in Gus's opinion, Toby's fur coat was always cleaned and combed just right. He even wore a sweater knitted especially for him by Olivia, his caretaker. Since Joyce, Gus's caretaker, and Olivia were friends, they would sometimes visit each other. Once as he watched from a distance, Gus saw Joyce petting and smiling at Toby. Gus was afraid Toby was becoming more important to her than he was. This upset him very much. So it goes without saying Gus and Toby hadn't had the best relationship. Gus never um, had thought about it much before. But now he knew he couldn't just hide behind the camel forever. When he sheepishly came out from behind it, Toby immediately saw him. Oh dear, I wish I hadn't made such sport of Toby. It wasn't his fault he was born to a, a rich family or that he got so much attention. Just as Gus anticipated Toby barking and growling at him, knowing that's what he deserved. Toby walked over and gave him a big lick right across his face. Hey, Gus, we made it. I really missed you, Toby exclaimed. What? You're not mad at me for how I treated you, asked Gus. Whatever was between us is forgiven, Toby said. I'm just glad we're both here. As the friendly animals enjoy playing and romping through the fields filled with singing flowers without breaking any of them, they remembered how loving Joyce and Olivia had treated them. They had seen through the mirrors how much both girls missed having them around. Heaven is the best place we have ever seen. But it sure would be nice if Joyce and Olivia could be here too, Gus said, with a tinge of sadness in his voice. Just then, Abby came pouncing by, grinning from ear to ear. She remembered Emily practicing Bible verses for Sunday school. The teacher had told the class whoever could memorize Romans 10.9 by ne next Sunday would get a prize. Emily kept repeating over and over, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. 
Saved from what? Abby had thought. Quickly and quite unexpectedly, it was like a light came on in her mind. It was then that Abby understood the meaning of that verse. It was talking about being saved from sin and eternal punishment. After all, no one would want to be punished forever for doing wrong. But now she understood that because God is always fair and everything he does is right, he must punish those who do wrong. Humans are different than animals and more is expected of them. God knew people could never be completely perfect. There's times every human does wrong. But since perfection was the only standard acceptable to God, he had to make a way where people could be made perfect in his sight. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die in the place of every person. Jesus was punished for the sins of the whole human race. But the good news is anybody but he can receive forgiveness for their sins by believing that Jesus paid the price for them. We receive forgiveness through faith in the blood of Jesus. Romans 3:25. Abby knew Emily was going to come to heaven because she had believed in Jesus. Just as Gus was pondering whether he would see Joyce again, a huge regal lion descended from the sky to stand beside him. Who, who are you? Gus asked with a shaky voice. I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion spoke with the authority of a king. But when Gus gazed into his eyes, all he saw was peace. You have been wondering whether Joyce will be joining you in heaven. Shortly after you came to join us here, her parents brought her to a church and she heard about Jesus, the Son of God, for the first time. When her Sunday school teacher asked if she would like to invite Jesus into her heart, she said that she would. So yes, you will see her soon. Emily is coming too, but sadly, Olivia isn't going to make it. Olivia won't be here, piped up Toby, but she always was so good to me. Good works cannot save a person. No one can get to heaven because of their own good works. Humans can get here only by believing in Jesus and trusting in him to forgive them for their sins. They must be willing to turn from doing wrong and trust me to help them do what I have planned for their lives, the lion wisely said. Toby started to cry when he heard he could never see Olivia again. But at that very moment, the lion changed back into who he had been from the start. The lion transformed into Jesus. Jesus wiped the tears from Toby's eyes. Abby remembered the verse from Sunday school she had heard Emily say that goes like this. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelations 21, 4. Oh, thank you that we can live here with you and the other animals you have created. Thank you for the loved ones who have believed in you and will be joining us in this celestial place, shouted Gus and Abby simultaneously. I know you gave Olivia many chances to come to you, Jesus. I'm so sorry she didn't make that choice, but I, I am thankful we can be here with you forever, Toby responded. 
Boys and girls, would you like to be with your favorite pets in a real place called heaven? Even if your pets are no longer with you, you can join them again in heaven. Why not ask Jesus to come into your heart right now, if you haven't done so already? He loves you and wants to help you through all the challenges of this life. And then he will bring you home to heaven to be reunited with your family and friends and special animals. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, please show me that you are real. I'm sorry for the wrong things I've said, thought, or done. Thank you for paying the price for my sins to make me right with God. I believe you are alive and ask you to come into my heart. Make me your child now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer, you've been made right with God. All your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Just keep believing in Jesus. If you want the best life possible, do what he asks you to do. He will let you know what he wants you to do by his Holy Spirit and by hearing or reading the Bible and doing what it says to do. Remember, God loves you very much. He will never stop loving you.